Yeah, so, hi, my name is Donovan Ebersol. I'm a tutor here at the ACE Lab uh, in Ashapola College. Uh, it's, uh, we go over uh, um, every major subject, uh, anything from uh, math and sciences to English, language, uh, arts, uh, pretty much everything <laughs> we try to do here. Uh, we, we have a, a, a huge amount of tutors here that allow us to really get every major subject. Um, and our biggest subjects here that we focus on really are math, uh, especially introduction math, uh, whether that's intermediate algebra, college algebra, um, up to even Calc 3 and uh, even differential equations. So uh, we have tutors for every subject um, and that's what we do here. We, we help out. So uh, speaking of math, let's kind of get, uh, let's go over a couple of problems uh, that are kind of introduction into uh, college algebra, um, which is probably the first math course that most people here will take. Um, if not the first, it's usually the second. And that's uh, whether you're going into the sciences or not, um, it's usually where we start out. So uh, to begin, let's do a couple of, uh, let's do three examples of some, some subjects that we talk about in college algebra and then what we go over here in the ACE lab. So the first subject we're going to talk about is plotting a line. So when we plot a line, we're given an equation and then we're asked to put that onto a graph, right? So let's do that. All right. If we're given a line, so this is usually how uh, lines are written. Um, I'll show you, it's, uh, let's give an example, three x plus two, three halves x plus two. Okay, so this right here we call the slope, um, and this is written in the form of y equals mx plus b. Uh, so m here, we call this the slope. Why they chose m, I don't know. <laughs> Mathematicians tend to do that. Uh, and then uh, B here we call the y-intercept. Um, and I'll kind of explain what these two things are. So the slope tells us um, essentially like a, just like a slope of, uh, of a hill or something, right? Um, it tells us are we rising or are we going down um, and kind of how steep that we're doing that at, right? Uh, we know that at very steep slopes it's hard to walk up, right? Uh, so those numbers tend to be higher and we're going to kind of see how that plays around. And then our y-intercept, um, if we were to graph this, our y-intercept tells us where we are crossing the y-axis. So this right here is the x-axis, this is the y, and we're going to find this y-intercept right here, this two, tells us where we're crossing it along here. Um, so if we have little marks, little tick marks, so start at zero, and then one, two, on up, um, and then same on the x-axis, you go start at one, two, three, and keep going. And then these are the same thing, just negative numbers down here, and then same across here, um, and negative as well. And so we are going to plot this line. Uh, it gets a, it's a little messy if you keep all the numbers, so I'm not going to erase those, so that way you guys can see a little better. Uh, but the idea, you see uh, that each of these tick marks represents uh, a number along that axis. So let's begin with this one. So the first thing I always start with is that y-intercept. It's the easiest to figure out uh, because it literally, it tells us exactly where we need to be. So this two tells us that we're gonna plot, um, the, we're gonna find two on the y-axis and that's gonna be our first point. So two is right here, right, one, two. If this was negative two, it would've been down here, negative two right here. Uh, but in this case, um, it was plus two. So that's what, uh, that's the first point that we're going to dictate. Now after that, we're going to be able, we need to, to find a line, to plot a line, you need two points. Uh, the first point we've already been given, that was the y-intercept. We need to find the second point. That second point we're going to find through the slope. And so uh, what's nice about the slope, it's rise over run. So rise over run or, ri or uh, y over x. There's a lot of different forms of that. Um, you probably have seen this before. If not, that's perfectly okay. Uh, so what that tells us is that uh, the number on the top is how much we're changing on the y. The number at the bottom is how much we're changing on the x. So in our case, they're both positive, so they're gonna go up and to the right. So positive x is always to the right, just like when you're reading, you know, you start from one end to go to the other. Uh, start from the left, go to the right. That's the same way in math. We're gonna start from the left, go to the right on the x, and then always t top to bottom, or bottom to top on the y. So uh, we'll start with the y. We're gonna go up three. So you go one, two, three, and then the x tells us two, right? So we're gonna go over two, one, two, all right? So this is our second point. So we went up three, 
That's what the uh, top number tells us, and the bottom number, two, tells us how far over we need to go. So we just connect these two lines, or these two points, and we have us a beautiful looking line, right? And now, um, some things to notice about this is that our slope was positive. That number is three halves, not negative three halves, right? Which means that we should be going up. And that's what we see. We see a positive slope, right? Just like you, if you were going up a hill, you see that positive slope, which is great. That's, a, that's, that's perfect. And then the other thing we notice is that um, this is at plus two, right? So we notice that it crosses at, in the positive y part, right? Not down here, it crosses up here. And then it, we notice it's, it crosses right at two. So that's perfect. That means we've done our job. We're good. We're done. We're done plotting our lines. Okay, so let's go on to the, uh, the second example. So the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what a function is. Um, and so we have multiple ways of doing that. Um, personally, this is the, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a function. Um, we're gonna be given an equation or a, a picture of a graph and we're going to find whether it is a function or not. Okay, there's multiple ways we can do that, uh, but I find the easiest is something we call the vertical line test. And again, Mathematicians are not super clever when coming up with names. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like, the vertical line test. All right, we're gonna draw some vertical lines and see what happens. All right, so we'll start off with a basic, uh, let's, let's do what we had just done before, the line. I right, you know something like this, right? So um, it doesn't really matter where it crosses or anything. This is just seeing if this is a function, okay? So the vertical lines test tells us that if we can draw multiple vertical lines and they only ever cross the, the function once, so the function here is our line. If we had a parabola, it'd be the little parabola and so on. So um, if it only crosses it once, that means it is a function, okay? That's what the vertical line tells us. So uh, we have this line here. I can draw multiple vertical lines and you notice it only ever crosses once, right? It crosses here, here, and it only ever does, it only does it once, right? I'm, I'm never gonna have a point, or draw a line, and it cross that, that, this function right here. We'll call this f of x, f being function of x. Uh, that, that line is never crossed more than once when we do the vertical line test. So that's great. That means that f of x is a function. Okay, you might be wondering, well, that's kind of obvious. Well, what about, um, is there examples where there aren't functions? Oh, there's plenty. So we're gonna find out, uh, let me draw one and show you. Okay, so let's draw a sideways parabola. In other words, it's gonna kinda of go in like this. It's that same U shaped, instead of being up like this, it's kinda of over to the side, makes like a little C. Let's, talk, let's see about this one, okay. So we're gonna do the same thing, draw some vertical lines and see if they cross, okay. So we draw a few vertical lines along our function. What do we notice? Oh, look, they cross twice. One, two. Cross again, twice here. This one also crosses twice. And so we only actually need just one line. If one line crosses twice, it's not a function. So what this means is, if we call this f of x, it is not a function. Okay, so we've seen a couple of, we, got, we have an example of what, what is and what isn't. Um, let's do one more. Okay. So th these are important um, because we, we want to, and we, one, we have to define what a function is, uh, but these actually have applications into, other, into um, the real world. You're rarely going to see an application in the real world where it's not a function, um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, uh, but that's the, the basic idea. Okay, so let's talk about another one. All right, let's see. Let's do the, let's do the parabola. Okay, gotta be kind of careful here, I draw this, but um, let's see if this one is, okay? So we're gonna do exactly the same thing, vertical line test, and look, again, they only ever cross once. That's all, that's great for us. What does that mean? That our, that this is a function, is a function. This is literally one of the first things you guys go over 
in, al in college algebra, um, but it's super important and sometimes it can get a little confusing. Uh, hearing it, uh, I've noticed hearing it once is okay, but hearing that, that second time and having someone personally go over things with you is really what's going to secure that into your brain and be able to get into that test and go, okay, I remember exactly what's happening, right? Um, hearing it, really hearing it the second, third, even fourth time really cements it in. Um, and that's what we at the ACE Lab do. We're not teachers, we're not, that's their job, but professors do a great job. Um, every, all professors here for, at uh, Chipola do a great job at um, teaching and really getting you introduced into the subject. Um, all we're here to do is cement it into your brain, right? It's to get it, get it deep in there so that way when you get into the test, even if you totally freak out, it's still gonna be there, right? That's the idea of the ACE Lab. All right. So we've talked about plotting lines, we've talked about functions and what those functions are, whether if I can draw you a graph and you can tell me what a function is. Um, so we've talked about those two things. Let's talk about one more thing. All right, this has to do with a little bit of parabolas um, and goes a little bit into, in depth into that. Uh, but we're going to talk about something called completing the square. Okay, so if I have given you something like plus 3x plus 7. Okay, uh, we could we could plot that. We put make this would be some kind of weird parabola. It'd be a little funky. I really, I'd have to really think about it to draw it. Um, and so, to to help that, rather than like trying to figure out what this means, uh, like what is the slope here, what is the y-intercept, those things are kind of weird. Uh, we're going to do something called completing the square. That's going to help us later, um, I'm not going to really show you that part, but it's going to help you be able to draw this and understand what's really going on. And we call that completing the square. So what we want, this is the goal, is we want something that looks like this. y equals 5 times x minus some number. And we're going to figure out what that number is, plus some other number. Okay, this is the form we want it. And the reason we want it like this is because if you actually drew this, if you drew the parabola, this number right here is how far you go over in the x. This number right here is how far you go over in the y. So it would be like this way, somewhere over here. And then um, this number tells you the slope, essentially. So you get this idea. Uh, the bigger this number, the wider it is. The smaller this number, the, the shorter it is. Uh, but that gives you a really good idea of what this parabola looks like. Here, you don't really get to see that, because you're going to notice these numbers give you totally different than anything you see up here. So. How do we do that? How in the world are we going to figure this out? Uh, well, because we already know the form of what we want, it actually really isn't that bad. If we can figure out this number, then I'll sh we'll show you how to get that. Okay? So let's do that. And the way we get this number is because of specifically um, this completing the square, how we do it, uh, and what's going on. The first thing we need to do is we need to um, pull out a 5 out of it. So that's y equals. We get 5x squared plus 3x plus 7. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we notice we, we um, added something over here. Right? So we're going to plus something minus that same thing. Right? So what's nice about equations is we can add something, but we have to make sure we subtract that exact same thing. So if we added 5 here, we need to subtract 5. 5 minus 5 is 0, right? So it's like adding 0. Uh, what's really nice about math is we can, we can do that. Zeros are really nice in, in, when it comes to algebra. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, um, we actually want, oh, this one's going to be a little funky. So uh, we can actually, we first, first we want to pull out this 5, right? So we notice that the 5 comes out here. Um, I did that on purpose. Uh, so we actually need to do that first. So y equals 5, x squared. But we only need to do it from these two terms with the x. We can leave the 7 alone. Um, so plus 3 over 5x plus some number minus some number plus 7. Okay. Uh, so notice I pulled it out of here too. I, I was able to do that. But that's because I haven't actually added, I haven't actually defined what that number is yet. Um, but we are going to see what that, what that number is. Um, so what all I did is I, I pulled out this 5. So I had... Uh, you don't have any number out here, but if I, if I factored this back in, right, or distributed back, you get 5 times, you get x squared, so they get 5x so squared, 5 times uh, 3 over 5, which is just the 5's cancel, and you're left with that 3x, and there's that term. So 
uh, we haven't done anything that messed up the equation. All we're doing is uh, kind of manipulating it a little bit. So, uh, yeah, so from here, what we're going to do is uh, we have the x squared plus 3 fifths x plus this blank. This blank is what we're going to try to figure out, right? This number uh, that we're adding, and then later we're going to be subtracting. Uh, we're going to see. So we've got to figure out what that number is. So the way we find that number is we take this, so 3 fifths. We're going to half it, and then we're going to square it. So we take half. Multiply by one half. If it's a fraction, that's a little easier to do than dividing it by two. It's a little weird. Um, and so you just multiply across three tenths, and then you square that number. So you take three ten and time and square it, or you know, three over ten times three over ten. So what's that equal to? That's nine over one hundred. That doesn't simplify, which is kind of good in our case. Um, and that's good. That's the number that's going to go here. Okay. Well, okay. Well, now we need to subtract. Um, so, do we just put nine over one hundred here? Not quite. And this is why, because of this five, right? Remember, we factored out that five, so we actually have to count that back in. So, what we do, the number that you subtract needs to be five times nine over one hundred, right? Just because, because if we distributed this out, this would be, you know, five x squared plus three x plus five times nine over one hundred. So let's do that, five times nine over 100. This gives us, um, so we can do this a couple ways. Uh, this is, if you do this five, five times nine, it's 45, one times 100, so 45 over 100. And then both of these numbers are divisible by five, which is great for us, so we get nine over 20. Okay, so that's the number that we're gonna be subtracting, nine over 20. Uh, now, obviously, this is uh, this is definitely one of the more difficult parts of problems. Like I, uh, the one I chose was definitely more difficult. Um, I, something sometimes this stuff works out really nicely, and we don't have this five if there's not a number out here. Um, so this is definitely one of the harder problems in this subject. Uh, if you can get this down, then you'll be fine for any any problem they give you. Okay. So now, but uh, this is not quite the same as this, right? We're pretty close, but not quite. So that's what we need to do next. All right, is we need to get this into the form of that right there. Uh, but we can actually factor this. Um, and what's really nice is the whole reason we did this is because this is uh, a difference of perfect squares. Yeah. Or a, uh, yeah. So or, this is um, a really nice. If we factor this, it's really nice. I'm not going to um, really go into it because. Um, but because of this whole problem, the, the way it worked out, I deliberately chose 9 over 100 because of this. Because all of this, this right here factors into x plus half of that, 3 over 10 squared. And then we still have minus 9 over 20 plus 7. Now we'll combine these in just a second uh, into one number, just like there's one number right here. Okay, but this works out, like I said, because we specifically chose um, this number to be uh, half of this and then squared, right? Because of that, it factors perfectly into here. Now I can show you this, like we can, we can do this real quick. X plus three halves squared is equal to X plus three halves, or three tenths, sorry. Not three halves, X plus three tenths. Um, and then X times X is X squared plus Three, uh, x times 3 over 10, so 3 over 10x, plus 3 over 10x, and then that times that, plus 9 over 100. And then if you add these two together, you get 3 over 5x, plus 9 over 100. You see, that's the exact same thing as that. It worked out really nicely, uh, and that we did that deliberately. So uh, you can see that it's exactly the same thing. Um, it just, it's nice because we could factor it. Uh, like I said, that was deliberate. We did that on purpose, and um, you can see that. Okay. So now that I showed you that it is the same thing, we are really close to this looking like this. So we have to do one more step. This is the last one. Oh, I have to move over, don't I? I'm sorry. Um, this is the last step, and then we're done. Okay. So the last step we need to do is we need to add negative 9 over 20 plus 7. Uh, so we have to find a common denominator. Uh, in this case, we have to do 20 because this is just over 1, uh, 7 over 1. So it's going to be kind of a big number, right? So we get negative 9 over 20 plus uh, 20. So 7 times 20 is 140. 
and so we get 131 over 20. Uh, that doesn't reduce, 131, I'm pretty sure that's a prime number, uh, so we can just leave it as that. Now we have all we need. We have y equals 5 times x plus 3 over 10 squared plus 131 over 20. We have completed our square. Awesome. That's all we needed to do. Um, like I said, we can use this for a lot of different things, mostly de to deal with graphing, uh, but this is a great place to start. Um, this is one of the, you'll probably get this into the middle of the semester, uh, but this is probably one of the more difficult things. And if, uh, if you can learn it in class, come over here, uh, get, you know, get that reinforced, you guys will get to be set to go and do well in college algebra.